What's up, dudes? I'm about with another video. Yes, the bands. In this one, I'm going to talk about bands that I will 100% not be missing, bands I definitely want to check out, and bands that I'm kind of curious about that I've only just got into, um, which we will talk about in this video. So I'm going to run through uh, songs that you want to listen to from these bands to get you into them, or albums that I would recommend. Um, but let me know in the comments what bands you guys are looking forward to, because it might give me a chance to, you know, get into a few more. There's still time before download, so if if there's a band here that sort of piques your interest, you've still got enough time to listen to the band, you know, get into them and then add them to, you know, the list of bands that you want to see at download. So yeah, let's talk about it. Starting off on the Friday, the band I will definitely not be missing very early on the Friday is the prog metal band Urn. Now these guys really are like level 100 musicians, like the musicianship here is insane. If you're a fan of any sort of prog metal, you will absolutely love these guys. Imagine if Gojira, Opeth and Mastodon all had a baby, that's kind of what I get from these guys, except British which uh, makes them even better than the rest of them. Um, but yeah, really, really cool band. Like I said, level 100 musicians, fantastic singer who absolutely tears apart his vocal cords. Um, also has a really, really great clean voice, fantastic drummer. Um, there, are, there are three pieces as well, so the drums are absolutely unbelievable. Bass is insane and the guitar is crazy. I don't know really how these guys do it. They are a fairly new band, so they only have two albums out. I do recommend both of those albums, but if you're just going by songs, I recommend Becoming the Ocean, Serpent and Spirit and Memorial. Just after Urn are the Callous Dow Boys. Now, I discovered these guys doing our listen to every band and review them, which is what we do as part of the Dear Download podcast, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, I listened to these guys and instantly, I thought Dillinger Escape Plan just came straight into my head and loads of other really cool sort of math rock stuff. Um, they've got loads and loads of weird timings. Um, they have little bits of electronica. They go into like weird Spanish beats, um, loads of off time stuff can get quite tooly. This is genuinely one of the most interesting bands I've listened to. They have a violinist. Um, these guys are literally just everywhere. Like one minute it sounds like sixth, the next minute it sounds like Dinner Escape Plan, the next minute it sounds like something quite melodic and nice. It's very, very strange um, that as soon as I started listening to them, I was like, yeah, this is amazing. And I think it's going to be very interesting to hear them play live. If you want to check them out, I recommend their latest EP, which is uh, God Smiles Upon the Callisto Boys. Um, I think it has their three strongest tracks on it. Uh, but the other stuff is really good too. But when I listened to this EP, I was like, my God, I was blown away. So yeah, definitely not missing these guys. Next up on the Friday is a band I genuinely thought I was never gonna get to see, and that's Mr. Bungle. Now, I'm sure that some of you have listened to download playlists and Mr. Bungle has come on, and you've probably thought to yourself, what on earth is this? And yes, that's why they're so interesting. Of course, they are the brainchild of Mike Patton, um, the lead singer of Faith No More. This was the band he was in previous to Faith No More. Uh, then he joined them and brought Mr. Bungle back at various points throughout Faith No More's career when he sort of had downtime from them. But they are such an interesting band. They literally play anything from like pretty much heavy metal all the way down to doo-wop. Uh, I mean, California is like a, a Beach Boys album on crack, basically. Their last album is actually a full metal album. I mean, it's closer to Slayer than everything else. You know, it's almost like there's a bit of death in there. There's a bit of heavy metal in there. There's a bit of metal metal in there. So it's just so interesting that they have the talent to move literally from one genre to another. I have absolutely no idea what they're going to play live. I think they have played a load of other gigs, but I haven't looked at any set lists because I'm just really intrigued and I want to sort of be surprised by what they play because I hope that not only they play the metal stuff, but I hope they play some of the really weird stuff as well. The three songs that I think give you like the best snapshot of this band are Hypocrites from the new album, Pink Cigarette from California and uh, Desert Search for Techno Alla from Disco Volante, which I think is genuinely one of the most creative, insane songs that I've ever heard. So I think if you check those songs out, you will be like, okay, I might watch this band because anything can happen. And finally on the Friday, we have the headliners, Queens of the Stone Age, a band that has been on my bucket list for years to watch live. So I am really, really excited about seeing them. Genuinely cannot wait to see Queens of the Stone Age. Dave Grohl, obviously a musician and friend of the band, but someone that we all love and respect, said that he 
thinks they are the best live band on the planet, which is a huge statement coming from Dave Grohl. So um, that makes me even more excited to see them. I've watched some of their sets on YouTube. They just sound and look absolutely fantastic. Obviously, Josh Homme, a massively talented songwriter. You know, they've written all sorts of stuff. They've written stuff on the heavier side. They've written stuff on the funkier side, stuff on the poppier side. Again, a lot like the last one, Mr. Bungle, these guys really can just turn themselves to anything. Um, and it's something that I'm certainly really, really looking forward to. And one of my highlights of the festival. It's something I'm genuinely looking forward to. And I think it's going to be a really great way to cap off the first day being the Friday. So so yeah, genuinely looking forward to it. When it comes to recommending songs, I mean, there's a whole Queens of the Stone Age playlist that I have that I'll link in the description because I would recommend a lot of their songs. But I do think specifically two of their albums, I think that Songs for the Deaf and Like Clockwork, I think, genuinely think that Like Clockwork is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. It is absolutely unbelievable um, and I really 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 like Songs for the Deaf that's like a 9 out of 10 album for me um, but yeah I would recommend I Appear Missing which is one of the songs from Like Clark Work that genuinely gives me chills every time I listen to it uh, first to give it taketh away I'm sure all of you guys have heard No One Knows um, but yeah basically anything from Queens of the Stone Age I would recommend because they're fantastic now onto the Saturday the first band I'll be checking out is Nate Oblefiscaris now these guys are an Australian prog metal band really really great again another band i discovered checking them out and listening to all the bands as part of the dear download exercise we were doing for all three days and i listened and i was like oh my god okay these guys are amazing they're like really strange nine minute long prog songs um vocals are kind of opeth style switching between claims and heavy uh they sort of seem to go really towards the orchestral style of prog so there's a lot of orchestral elements to the music i think the music music really is laid out like an orchestral piece of music but with metal flowing through it it's very very hard to describe these guys um but i think again if you're a fan of anything sort of progish or anything slightly different from the norm I really think you guys will get a massive kick out of these um, and I'm really interested to see what they can bring live having such long songs uh, I'm guessing they're only going to have a 30 to 40 minute slot um, so they're probably only going to be able to play like <laughs> four or five tracks depending on which ones they play um, so I think it might be like watching uh, a really weird you know a classical concert um, with metal musicians if that makes any sense at all this band is really really hard to explain um, but yeah something I'm really really looking forward to next up on the Saturday is a band that I have really really got into recently called Low Lives a really cool alternative rock band um, shades of the older sort of grunge stuff as well like Nirvana Alice in Chains um, but sort of really closer to the more modern day grunge alt rock stuff like Dinosaur Pile Up um, I'd be really interested to see what these guys are like live I haven't checked any of their stuff out live. Uh, I want it to be sort of like a surprise, but they can really craft a really, really good catchy song. And I've been listening to them a lot recently. Three of the songs I would recommend you guys checking out are Liar, Loser, and You Don't Care. Next up, I will definitely not be missing a single note of Holding Absence. Definitely been one of my favorite British bands in the last five, six, seven, eight, God knows how long. I first saw them uh, at 2000 Trees in 2018, but well, they weren't really playing to that many people, but they absolutely blew me away. They were just insane. I think a great way to describe this band, because you say musically, you know, they're alternative, modern emo but i think that this describes it they have filled the gap that funeral for a friend left and that's how i genuinely feel about this band and i think it's a good description um of where they fit in within the music landscape but also i have never seen a band connect so much with fans live like the connection between the fans and this band live is literally something i've you know, i've seen hundreds of bands over the years and i've never seen a fan base connect with a singer and a group of musicians like this i mean the passion is just absolutely unreal and um it's not it hasn't been matched in anything that i've seen at least within the last 10 or 15 years it's just absolutely mind-blowing to see these guys live so i definitely won't be missing a note i will be singing every single word of holding absence um because they are just so great the three songs i would recommend uh, for you guys really to get a good little taste of them um would be afterlife a crooked melody and gravity next up is a band i have literally been waiting 23 years to see and that is pantera um i have said on the channel before that i was so 
close to seeing the original Pantera lineup. And unfortunately, due to 9-11 happening, um, that never came to fruition, unfortunately. So literally, I've been waiting 23 years to see this band. I know it's not the same version, of course, of the band since the brothers, unfortunately, um, are not with us anymore. But I am super, super excited to finally get to hear these songs live, even, of course, if we are missing some of the original musicians. But it's the best version of Phil that we've got. I think if Pantera, obviously, if those unfortunate events hadn't have happened, I don't think we would have got the best version of Phil um, in the 2000s. I think that now we're getting the best version. He's sounding great live. The band is sounding great live. Obviously, they have shaped the metal landscape. I mean, you can hear it specifically in bands like Malevolence have so much Pantera in them. It's absolutely unreal with the sludginess and some of the grooves that they have always reminded me of Pantera. So if you like Malevolence, I think you might really dig some Pantera stuff because there's a lot of it they've taken from Pantera. Um, but yeah, I don't want to babble on about Pantera too long because I'm sure a lot of you already uh, are aware of the band. But yeah, it is going to be um, one tick off the bucket list for me and um, I'm going to be singing every single word. If you're new to Pantera, I recommend listening to some of the big tracks as they are their best songs like Walk and Cowboys from Hell. Uh, but there are other songs I would recommend like Five Minutes Alone, um, Cemetery Gates, um, Revolution Is My Name. They have a lot of good stuff. I don't think Pantera, um, obviously bar the stuff, Pre Cowboys from Hell, uh, which we won't talk about. Uh, I don't think they have a bad album, so uh, just go and check out any of Pantera's stuff. I'm sure you'll like it. I keep forgetting how stacked this day is, but looking at the bands, I'm just like, I'm going to be absolutely all over the place on this Saturday. Um, the next band I'm really, really looking forward to is Enter Shikari. Um, I still think that these guys are massively underrated, but I am really, really happy that they're actually getting a place on the main stage. They seem to have been on every single stage at Download, uh, so I'm glad they're finally getting to shine on the main stage. They are an absolutely cracking live band, and someone that I always enjoy watching. Also, musically, I don't think there has been an album of theirs that I dislike. Unlike a lot of people, the first album is not really one of my favorites and I pretty much prefer everything after that. Although I like the songs from it, uh, but I think their most recent couple of albums, well, the last probably three or four, everything from Flash Flood of Color all the way up has just been absolutely top notch. I mean, they do everything, you know, they can do alternative, they can do prog stuff, they can do electronica, they can do metal. They're just such an interesting listen. And I think they should really be propped up by us, especially being what I think as one of the best British bands in the last 15 years. I think three songs to give you a really good snapshot of their career would be Anita Tist, It Hurts, and The Great Unknown. I think that'll give you a nice little snapshot of um, all the weird kind of stuff that they can do. And finally, headlining on the Saturday night, it's Fear Factory. You thought I was going to say Fallout Boy, didn't you? Headlining the uh, Dogtooth stage is the legendary metal band Fear Factory. Legitimately one of my favourite bands over the last 20 years plus. Um, I am absolutely going to be buzzing to see these guys. Uh, it's been a long, long time coming. It's a great new phase for the band. They are sounding absolutely immense live, playing a pure best of set. Uh, for those that don't know about Fear Factory, they are an industrial metal band. Um, they don't really have many industrial bits to them apart from I would say the rhythm section uh, everything else about them really is quite metal from the vocals to the guitars but the rhythm section is um, pretty much just like a robot having a stroke which is absolutely fantastic and they have a lot of uh, sci-fi lyrics and um, they base a lot of their stuff and artwork on science fiction which ticks all of my boxes and why they've been one of my favorite bands but I do highly recommend them for any metal that hasn't heard them um, I think you'll find it an interesting listen especially if you play the rhythm section uh, I think you might be blown away a little bit I will be watching Fear Factory over Fallout Boy I will be checking out what's left of Fallout Boy after Fear Factory have finished um, but yeah I am really really looking forward to these guys sort of capping off um, what is going to be an amazing day for me absolutely stacked lineup for me on Saturday um, but I'm sure I will enjoy the end of Fallout Boy as well as I do like some Fallout Boy songs um, and yeah I think it's going to be a great way to end the Saturday moving on to the Sunday of course the last day of the festival um, a band I will definitely not be missing I saw them in 2018 I watched this band rather than watching Guns N' Roses it's Thy Art Is Murder um, Deathcore is a bit of a mixed bag for me um, I think a lot of Deathcore can be very very samey but I feel like Thy Art Is Murder's songs have more depth 
Um, and I think I just like the riffs and the sort of oomph that they've got to their music a lot more than a lot of deathcore. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to seeing them. I don't think I've seen them since 2018. Uh, so it's going to be an absolute blast again to see these guys live. Three tracks I recommend you guys would listen to from them to get a really good idea of that is murder is Puppet Master, Reign of Darkness and Holy War. Next up on the Sunday is a band that I've been a fan of as long as I've been a fan of Fear Factory pretty much. It's Machine Head, um, a band with absolute bangers for days legendary metal band uh, i mean just been going for so long now and been so consistent with their music crazy to think that they actually played what was technically donnington uh, but was the old monsters of rock um in like 1995 or 96 i believe um and now they're actually playing at download as well i know they've played download before but it is quite crazy to be one of those only bands that have played the festival pre-download which kind of means they're showing their age but i don't really get an old vibe from this band because i feel like their music is still quite legitimately really good um, and they don't sort of go back and rely on anything that they've done before they tend to always push the boundaries which i really like about machine head um, but yeah really great live as well if you're looking forward to machine head i can guarantee you now you will not be disappointed i was luckily one of those people in 2022 that got into the really small tent for the secret machine head show at bloodstock and um wow that was incredible um so yeah really really looking forward to the songs another one i'm probably going to be singing my heart out to machine head songs i would recommend for you guys to listen to to get a really good idea of them would be unhallowed from the last album absolutely fantastic song imperium and is anybody out there it's a very strange festival sort of on the face of it there's a lot of um weird stuff that's been booked this year um but the undercard for me also holds some absolute gems like this band a band that i've never seen before that i'm really looking forward to it's code orange um i have been a massive massive fan of their last two albums i genuinely think they are absolutely incredible i think underneath is a 10 out of 10 metal album um i don't think there's been a visceral just punch you in the face metal album for a long time like that um and i think the weird thing about this band is they always reminded me of chimera um uh, chimera obviously went in a more metal direction these guys obviously are more experimental with the sound changing a lot um, but i feel like chimera's first album pass out of existence just sounds like a code orange album i know it was like way before but um you could just slap a code orange sticker on it and i legitimately don't think anyone would notice um so if you do like code orange go and check out chimera pass out of existence their first album i think you will really really dig it um but back to code orange yeah really good looking forward to them a band i've never seen i always look forward to seeing bands for the first time especially at download um so yeah this is probably one of the ones on the festival that i'm most looking forward to songs i would recommend you guys to listen to for code orange would be swallowing the rabbit hole take shape and grooming my replacement and very high up in the bill it's limp biscuit um finally on the main stage um last time i saw them was in 2013 when they're on the second stage which was still great but biscuit are too big to play on a second stage you, you have to have this band on the main stage there are just too many people that want to see them or are intrigued to watch them uh, i mean what is there really to say about them you know they've been around when rock was at its peak um you know sold millions and millions of records and just are a genuinely great band i mean i know they're big and everyone like likes limp biscuit but i still feel like musically they're very underrated i think they've got a really great rhythm section and they always have done uh they've got a lot of groove and um you know wes borland's riffs are just out of this world he's such a creative person um really really enjoyed their last album as well actually i thought it was really good we waited a hell of a long time for it um i thought gold cobra before that was pretty terrible to be honest so um yeah still sucks was really really good and a great surprise um yeah and I literally cannot wait to see Biscuit. Every time I see them, I'm just excited. I'd, right before they play, I'm like, I'm seeing the Biscuit. This is amazing. Um, I saw them at the end of last year and they were just fantastic. Honestly, it is going to go off for Biscuit. Um, genuinely excited as always, even though this is like the 10th time I've seen them. For you newbies that have never seen Limp Biscuit you are going to have so much fun seeing this band. Um, they don't take themselves too seriously, but they like to have a hell of a lot of fun and they like to make sure that you're having fun as well. So yeah, you're going to dig it. I won't recommend, um, you know, any other Biscuit songs because I'm sure you guys can see all the albums, but I would recommend listening to um, the, la the last album they brought out. I genuinely think it's good. I think Dad Vibes is um, a great single. Really, really too short, actually, because it's really good. But yeah, 
definitely recommend the last album still sucks it's excellent and headlining and finishing up the festival on the sunday it's avenge sevenfold um a band that i haven't really paid that much attention to live um i kind of watched them for a little bit in 2018 i go through weird phases with this band where i'm like really into avenged uh, and then i go out of it and then i'm just like i don't want to listen to any avenged um, and then I go back into Avenged again. Um, but every time I do, I realize how amazing this band are. Um, and they're one of the sort of new breed of bands that have come all the way up and are now headlining the festival, which is fantastic. I think this is the um, third or fourth time that they've headlined now. So yeah, it's really, really proud of them for getting big and you know coming up through the ranks and finally headlining the festival, which is great. But I genuinely like a lot of their albums um and i do think they're a fantastic band and i think it's a great way to end the weekend actually hopefully they play loads of really really weird stuff from the new album and everyone but me hates it um because that's what i'm really looking forward to <laughs> i'm really looking forward to the songs that they play that sound like frank zappa um and just to freak everyone out where everyone's just like what on earth is this if you haven't listened to a new album it's super weird um but yeah um I think it'd be great to finish off and I think Avenged are an awesome band. Hopefully they put on a really, really good show. Yeah, so there you go, guys. That's who I'm looking forward to. Um, I'd like to know who you're looking forward to as well. So tell me in the comments um, who you want to see and who you're really, really geared up to seeing. I've listened to every band that's playing this weekend, so I probably will know who you're talking about. Um, there's a lot of strange stuff on this lineup um and i know it's a very very odd one uh, and i'm not talking about busted there are far weirder things that might not belong on a download lineup on this than busted trust me if you've listened to everyone that's playing um but i do think also there are some gems in the undercard and some stuff that i am really really looking forward to i think that there could be some great performances this weekend that i'm really really buzzing about um so yeah i won't babble on too much about that thank you very much for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i shall see you dudes in the next video you should go and subscribe to my channel just because come on subscribe